The premise of the Hannah Swenson series is that Hannah runs a cookie store in Lake Eden. That's a small town in Minnesota with less than 3,000 citizens. It is such a small town, I have to wonder how she stays in business. Like, wouldn't she need half the town to buy cookies every single month just to break even on her cookie-making business? Those are some ambitious sales quotas. Argo Funk Book Review, Argo Funk Book Review. This review brought to you by Patreon. Patreon, please give me your money. We start by meeting the various people in Hannah's life. Dolores is her overbearing mother who wants her to get married right away. Dolores is currently trying to set Hannah up with Norman, the dentist. Alas, the most important man in Hannah's life right now is her cat. Well, Hannah has a busy sister named Andrea with a four-year-old daughter, and she's got an assistant named Lisa Herman. Lisa more or less runs the cookie store for the entire book, since Hannah will be too busy solving a murder mystery. So, who died? It's Ron LaSalle, the milk delivery man. He was shot in the truck while parked by Hannah's store. Andrea's husband Bill is assigned to the case. Bill is nice, but he's pretty incompetent, so he asks Hannah to help him out. Because apparently a cookie chef is a better crime solver than the policeman who just passed his detective's test last week. Hannah caters at the school. It turns out the victim had coffee there that morning. He left behind two cups, and one had lipstick on it. Hannah goes dumpster diving to retrieve the cup, and she goes through all the cosmetic places in town. It turns out only one woman wears that particular shade of lipstick, Danielle Watson. Also, Hannah gets a makeup makeover, and she looks super hot. Hannah tracks down Danielle and asks why she was with Ron the morning of the murder. Danielle says Ron was her gambler's anonymous sponsor. She had a breakdown and went to a casino. Ron tried to stop her, and he got into a fight with the casino guard. His tooth was chipped in the fight. Ron and Danielle spent the rest of the night drinking coffee and talking. Danielle swears nothing else happened, but she begs Hannah not to tell her husband. Also, Hannah buys a dress, and she looks super hot. Hannah figures Ron went to the dentist to get his tooth fixed. Norman is the only active dentist in town. Andrea insists on helping at this point, so she breaks into Norman's office and searches for clues, while Hannah distracts Norman by taking him out to lunch. Norman ends up being somewhat funny, and he asks Hannah to be his date for the upcoming Woodley party. He must have noticed she's super hot now. But Andrea comes back with proof Norman is up to no good. It's a recipe for pecan chews? There are cookie recipes scattered throughout this book. It's kind of awkward they put a cookie recipe right after a look at this evidence cliffhanger. Well, the evidence is a bunch of inappropriate pictures. It turns out they belong to Norman's father, not Norman, so Hannah's party date is in the clear. Also, Mom offers to buy Hannah new shoes to go with her new dress. Hannah and Lisa go shoe shopping, and they look super hot. They visit the casino, where Hannah pretends to be Ron's sister. She learns that the bouncer has an alibi, and she wins $2,000 on the slot machines without trying. Talk about lucky. Hannah and Norman go to the Woodleys' party. The party is incredibly fancy, because the Woodleys are super rich. The Woodleys openly dislike Hannah, so I have no idea why they invited her in the first place. I have no idea why they invited Norman. They don't even know who he is. Hannah dislikes the Woodleys back, or at least she gets snobby about the fact that the cookies at their party have too much shortening and too little vanilla. I say Hannah is a cookie snob, but the caterer is impressed by her dessert tasting skills. Norman is hilarious for the entire party, and he does well with Hannah's relatives. Sounds like he's a keeper. Hannah talks with Danielle, and she says Ron made a brief stop at the dairy the day of the murder. Ron saw his boss, Max, meeting with an unknown person. Max hasn't been seen since. Norman warns Hannah to stay away from Max. He's a nasty loan shark. He let Norman's parents pay off their house for 14 years before trying to take it from them at the last second. Total jerk. Hannah and Andrea break into Max's house and his office. They find Max's dead body by his safe next to his shady loan agreements. 
So now it's looking like the killer really went after Max and they killed Ron because Ron was a potential witness. Ron was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Poor Ron. The good news is, knowing the real victim's identity gives us a new clue. One of Andrea's clients passed by the dairy that morning. The culprit almost ran them over with a rental car. The rental car company says they'll identify the car and the culprit as soon as their tech guy gets back into town in a few days. But Hannah can't possibly wait that long, so she keeps investigating. A new police detective named Mike Kingston comes to town. Bill tells Hannah the sad story of how Mike's pregnant wife was killed. Hannah is so touched, she agrees to attend a family dinner with Mike. Once Bill leaves, Hannah realizes, wait a minute, Bill purposely set her up to meet this guy. Hannah is impressed. Bill is smarter than she thought. Which is weird, because two pages earlier, Hannah had to remind Bill that the culprit probably wouldn't leave their name behind at the crime scene. I guess Bill is only smart when it comes to dating. Mike ends up being incredibly tall and handsome, to the point where Hannah can't talk around him. Clearly, Mike is not based on me. Hannah goes to question Danielle some more. It turns out Danielle is being physically abused by her husband, and tragically, she refuses to report him to the police. I hope he gets brought to justice in a later book. That was a sad subplot. Hannah narrows in on the Woodleys, who have financial problems. Maybe they could save money by not throwing a giant party for the entire town each year. Just a thought. In any case, the Woodleys desperately need money, so they probably made a deal with the loan shark. So, Hannah narrows in on Andrea's ex-boyfriend, Benton. That's her first suspect, but the culprit ends up being the mother, Mrs. Judith Woodley. Judith pulls out a gun when Hannah asks too many questions, and she explains her plot in detail. Hannah distracts Judith by claiming her antique tea set is a fake. What? No fake tea set? No! Hannah grabs the gun and holds Judith off until the police arrive. In the epilogue, Bill gets all the credit for solving the mystery, and he's promoted. Hannah is such a nice sister-in-law for helping him. At the family dinner, Mom bets Hannah that both Norman and Mike will ask her out before the end of the night. Mom wins the bet, and Hannah can't believe multiple guys want to date her. The end. Postbook follow-up? Why is Hannah surprised that multiple guys want to date her? She's basically the perfect girlfriend. Like, if I had met her in college, I totally would have wanted to date her. She's smart, she's funny, she runs her own business, and gives people free cookies all the time. What's not to like? She does give away a lot of free cookies in this book, at least five dozen. Free cookies is her go-to excuse for talking to suspects. It's the perfect icebreaker, but again, I have to wonder how she stays in business. I think she gives away more cookies than she sells. I'm told this book is one of the most well-known cozy mysteries. I can understand why. Hannah is a relatable character, and the narrative is very comfy, all the characters are nice and friendly. It feels like you're going back home or taking a vacation to visit old friends when you're reading this book. It just gives you that nice, comfy feeling. I left out a lot of characters in my recap, because I don't want this to be a 30-minute video, but the characters I left out were still good. The characters are definitely a highlight of this book. I could imagine somebody who is in a literary mood writing a paper on how the town itself could be considered a character. Hmm, <laughs> literature! Overall, this is a good book which has stood the test of time, and I can understand why. My only complaint is that my library needs another copy of this book because the waiting list is super long. Yeah, I don't really have any complaints about this book, which... Yeah, you know what? I'm going to give Hannah Swenson Mystery Number 1, Chocolate Chip Cookie Murder, a 10 out of 10. It's definitely a great mystery, and while it's not perfect, it's very close. And uh, on the screen, you've got a link to my Patreon, so if you want me to review a mystery book, just click on the link, and it will take you to my page where you can commission a book review.